Carol Horton is the Vice President for the Clyde Health Foundation. She joins us today on Medically Speaking. Carol, good to see you today. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. So before we get started and talk about some of the fundraising initiatives that you had in the past year or so, if you can, for the viewers out there, tell us a little bit about the foundation and who you support. So the Clyde Health Foundation overall supports the better health of our community. But when you look at that more specifically, you can really tie it down to our different locations, our different hospitals, and our different programs. So specifically, the Clyde Health Foundation supports patients and programs at Buffalo General, at Gates Vascular, at Millard Fillmore, at DeGraff, at the Visiting Nurse Association, and at our labs at Flint Road. So we have a long list and a very diverse line of service lines that we support. So to that point, um, we're in the middle of a pandemic and the Clyde Health Foundation jumped in some 10 months ago. So if you can explain, you know, just how um, you and your team plugged in uh, uh, to the workforce of Clyde Health and as, uh, the, you know, the frontline workers were dealing with COVID-19, really, you know, back towards March when we were really in some uncertain times. Yeah, so it is an amazing journey to look back on when you think about what things were like back in the middle of March when we realized that Clyde Health was going to be implementing universal masking and that things were really going to um, get bad quickly and that we had admitted our first COVID-19 patients. So immediately what we did as a foundation, because of course we were working remotely, so we had to pretty much reinvent everything, but we knew that we were going to need a lot of extra funding for many things, um, all the way from the PPE that we desperately needed and that at various different times has been more challenging than others to acquire. Um, Two things that could just support our healthcare workers who in many cases were working double shifts, were working many, many days in a row without a day off because of the volume of the patients that we had. And we knew that they were going to need some creature comforts, whether it be anything from meals supplied to them to even perhaps some grocery packs that they could take home because they really didn't even have the ability sometimes to run to the grocery store. So you started up a new fund, something that obviously the foundation uh, did directly in response to this uh, kind of crisis. So tell us a little bit about the COVID-19 response fund and, and why that was started. So we did, we started it right around St. Patrick's Day of last year and immediately got it out on a lot of social media and through Clyde's various networks. And to date we've raised about $1.4 million about $800,000 in cash and about $600,000 in in-kind. And it was because we really knew that there was no way we were going to be able to support our community with a pandemic like this without additional funding. I mean, it was just physically impossible as we know, as we've seen this unfold and we see what is happening with our governments and, and how things are being reversed and often not reimbursed. So unplanned, but a significant amount of dollars raised in a relatively short period of time. If you can, tell us a little bit about what that um, fund is used for and how it has helped our frontline workers. Right. So we have bought tens of thousands of masks in the way of PPE. We've also supplied um, various gowning. We've also been able to provide folks with um, overtime pay, additional pay for the additional workforce that we've needed. Um, We've even had some beds that we've supplied. We've even had some wheelchairs at various points that we've needed, whether it be funding for additional respirators, really anything that has been needed all the way from that to, as I said earlier, meals. We have supplied 80,000 meals for our healthcare workers since this started back in March. And it sounds like such a simple thing, but it's so necessary and not just obviously for the logistics of that we can't really have people going on huge breaks and whatnot that they need to be able to eat in the hospitals. But also it's just that that kind of nourishment of not just your body, but of your soul, that when you're going through such a traumatic thing and what our healthcare workers have been through is traumatic, what they've seen over the past 10 months. Um, it's just a little thing that can kind of help everyone feel a little bit better. Boy, those are remarkable numbers to think that uh, the foundation was able to help uh, navigate COVID-19 and feed that many frontline workers. If you can, um, if you wanted to, let us know how some of the donors and who they were that stepped up um, in that early portion of the pandemic. I want to be sure that we thank our partners like m and um, Pagula Sports and Entertainment, First Niagara Foundation, our folks, uh, partners at Danforth, Tony Walker and the Advantage Company. They were one of the first ones that actually said, hey, let's do some kind of a virtual event. 
And I think it was early April when they actually did a virtual concert for us. And we had some auction items and people donated various things. And we were able to raise $26,000 in one evening as a result of that. So that really kind of sets the tone for, for where we've been and where we're going. Our partners at Tops donated you know, many grocery packs for our healthcare workers to take home as well. So it's just been a tremendous effort from all of our community partners. In, in saying that, um, your message to those partners who stepped up, I mean, for them to move that quickly, obviously must be pretty meaningful to you and your team. It is. And it's this continually humbling, um, unbelievable factor of why Buffalo is Buffalo. I mean, I, I've lived in a lot of different places and I've never seen anything like this before where you just say, you know, hey, we really need some help. And people say, how can I help you? And it just happens and it's it's nothing short of remarkable and it's why this is such a special place. Despite having to deal with COVID-19, the hospitals do have other needs as they went through 2020 and as we go through 2021. Uh, and that would um, you know, mean that the foundation uh, would have to continue to support some of those operational needs. What other events did you um, have in 2020 and you know how did the pandemic change the way that you did that fundraising? Right. So. We had the opportunity to add a couple of things right before the pandemic hit. So we really wanted to support, for instance, the Visiting Nurse Association because they have such a huge need, um, not just with supplies, but they also have a big need with telehealth and educating their folks on how to best use telehealth. So that was wonderful. We were able to do a little bowling event back in February. I think we called it Leap Day at the Lanes because it was on February 29th. Um, then as the event, as the pandemic unfolded, I mentioned the concert that we did with Tony Walker but then we were able to do a couple other fun things too. Um, we had an event at Halloween called Halloween on Transit. And we were able to do something where the kids could still dress up in their costumes. They could get in their cars and be socially distanced and still be able to celebrate Halloween and have some sort of normalcy. We raised about $25,000 doing that. And then everyone of course was saying, 2020, can we just be done with 2020? So we did something called um, Collided Kisses 2020 Goodbye. And it wasn't necessarily a virtual event as in something online, but what we were able to do was set up packages that people could buy to entertain in very small groups, 10 or under in their homes safely, um, and just have some great um, food from Oliver's and desserts from Muscarelle's and some nice champagne from Premier. And, um, and just kind of ring out 2020 and welcome 2021. And people were so supportive of that as well. We raised about $50,000 for that. Yeah, that's great. And it's good to see the creativity and the mix of both virtual and in-person events, you know, as this past year um, you know, came at us with COVID-19, uh, the first spike and then the second spike. Um, we're nearing the end of January. And as we head into February, that means Valentine's Day is coming up. Uh, especially for our, our male viewers out there. Tell us how the Clyde Health Foundation can help them navigate Valentine's Day 2021. We have a solution. Okay, so this is called our Heart of Gold box. Um, it's $30. And of course, the proceeds will go to the Clyde Health Foundation. Um, so you can order it between now and February 9th. You have to have your orders in by February 9th. We have to pick it up on February 12th. You have to go to the outbuilding behind Miller Fillmore Suburban Hospital and we'll have it waiting for you. So you don't even have to get out of your car, contact this delivery, we'll make sure that you have it. And one lucky box will have a certificate for a beautiful David Yerman heart necklace um, that the folks at Reed's Jewelers were kind enough to donate to us. It's absolutely beautiful. It's valued at $697. So there's a little incentive there for you to get your, your heart of gold box. Well, that's great news, especially, again, for the male viewers who normally go out on February 13th for their Valentine's gift for their loved one. Um, one thing we left out, I guess, uh, probably the most important question is uh, for their, those who are out there viewing this who may want to help or donate or get involved, how can they do that? Yeah, so if you'd like to participate in the Heart of Gold or any of our events, or if you'd just like to donate, colliderhealth.org slash donate. There's information and links to everything that we've discussed there, and everything is just so very much needed and so very much appreciated at this time. Um, we just can't thank the community enough for all of their ongoing support. Carol Horton is the Vice President for the Clyde Health Foundation. She joins us today at Medically Speaking. Thanks again for being here. Nice seeing you, Mike.